morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Elle's Reptiles. This week we are going to be talking about the best plants for your crested gecko. Just want to preface this by saying that I am not great at keeping plants alive in tanks. I'm good at keeping plants alive in life, just not in tanks. I don't know why. I just always overwater or underwater, kill them all. But <laughs> we're going to just look at what are good plants in crested gecko tanks and I'll probably just give you my opinion about all of them too as we go. In no way is this an exhaustive list of what all plants can go into tanks. It's just a list of some of the easiest to find slash best ones because they're easy to find. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by Heart Gecko so make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out more about this awesome company. Let's get started. All right, so the first one on this list is Pothos. Pothos is my personal favorite in any bioactive tank because they are easy to keep alive. They're the only plants that I can keep alive in tanks. Every one of my tanks, except for the Crocodile Skinks tank, every one of my tanks at this point only has Pothos in it. They're the only ones that have survived. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm so bad at keeping plants alive in tanks. Actually, my King Snake tank has a couple of live plants because they're in pots. They're not planted directly into his tank, which I guess is the secret for me. Anyways, side tangent, Pothos. Those. Pothos are fantastic. They grow like crazy. They grow so much that you can propagate them and make new pothos and put them in different spots or in different tanks because they grow so well. They, look, there's a new little leaf. They, so I sat down to edit this video and realized that from this point forward, all the audio is gone. My microphone died. So this is take two and hopefully I can remember everything I said in the first one. So that about wraps it up for pothos. They're just super hardy, super easy to grow plants that can grow basically anywhere and you can get offshoots from them. Next up, we have the bird's nest fern. Bird's nest ferns are awesome because they are very full and they stay close to the ground, whereas a pothos is gonna grow basically wherever you let it grow. The leaves of a bird's nest fern are not heavy duty enough to support a full blown adult crested gecko, but for little baby crested geckos, they can provide so much hiding area and place Places for them to go in and sleep during the day. Bird's nest ferns are often recommended as one of the best crested gecko plants just because they do tend to do pretty well in more humid and moist environments just like most ferns tend to do. I have not had any luck with this specific plant but that's just me. My plant experience is probably not that of most people's plant experiences but the bird's nest fern is really nice, really full. It's gonna fill in a lower area of your tank, especially like kind of towards the front of your tank. It just looks nice and it has like really cool curls at the ends of the leaves. Nice looking plant. Sansevieria. I previously would not have recommended this plant if I didn't see so many people with crested geckos that kept Sansevieria in their tanks. I was always under the impression that this plant, also called mother-in-law's tongue or snake plant, that this plant was super opposed to water, opposed to liquids. But apparently, as long as the drainage is good, these plants are good to go. I mean, obviously they don't really wanna be watered every single day, but like once a week, good drainage, you're good. This plant can grow very, very large. So just a heads up on that. If you are in a small tank, they do grow pretty fast and they can outgrow that tank pretty fast. But these are so nice because the leaves are very, very thick. So your crested gecko is gonna have no problem climbing up and all around this plant. I do suggest if you put this into a crested gecko tank, you keep it in a separate pot. That way you can just kind of ensure that it's not getting too wet and that the drainage is good on that plant. And then you can water it like once a week and be good to go. I love these plants. They come in a few different styles, I guess, types of green. They're so cool. They're so nice. They're super easy to take care of. I mean, I say that I've killed one in a leopard gecko tank, but two out of my three Sansveria are still alive. The one in my king's next tank, 10 out of 10, he loves that plant. Highly suggested for any kind of tank, really. The creeping fig. This plant is like it sounds. It creeps, it grows, it fills in spaces, and it does it very quickly. I had this in my cave gecko's tank and it actually lasted for a little while before it all just kind of died out. If you're even a little bit good at plants, this plant is gonna be fantastic because it's going to like carpet your tank and it's gonna make it look so full and green and nice and it grows pretty fast. It not only grows out this way, but the sprouts kind of also grow up this way and it just looks really, really nice. Even though crested geckos don't spend that much time on the ground, it is gonna provide a little bit of ground cover, especially for that cleanup crew if you're 
do in bioactive it is just a nice plant that will fill in your tank that is just a huge thing it fills it in it makes it look full it makes it look super green and it enjoys a more moist environment which super helpful in the case of crested gecko tanks the dracaena there are so many different types of dracaena plants there are ones that grow tall like little palm trees there are little short ones they come in greens and yellows and reds and all different colors the leaves on these are pretty thick especially crested gecko babies they most certainly will be okay to climb all around these leaves if you get the taller ones the stalk is actually thick enough and again heavy duty enough that it can support a full grown crested gecko if you do get a more stocky dracaena make sure to be careful with that because again it can and outgrow your tank. I kept a Dracaena in Dexter's tank for a very long time until basically it outgrew the tank and died because it had nowhere else to go. If that does become an issue, you can always take it out and repot it and just keep it out of the tank in a bigger pot if you'd like to. Dracaena plants, there's so many different options. They look all different and huge plus here, the tips of the leaves of a Dracaena will turn brown if you are going too long without watering it. So they even have a little indicator to remind you to water those plants. Next up we have philodendron. Philodendron are or phylodendron, however you pronounce it. They're another very hardy plant just like the pothos. They don't grow in my personal experience. They don't grow as fast as a pothos. They don't fill in the tank as fast as a pothos, but they do grow pretty fast. They are also a vining plant and they look pretty similar to the pothos as well, but the leaves are smaller and you have a bunch of different colors just like the pothos. A pothos and a philodendron are the only thing that survived in my crocodile skinks tank and they are are thriving like that philodendron has new leaves it is thriving over there the only thing with the philodendron and it doesn't apply to crested geckos because crested geckos don't eat plants is you might want to be careful if you do happen to put this plant into a reptiles tank that does eat plants because it does have some harmful effects however crested geckos don't eat plants so this doesn't apply here but just something to keep in mind if you were using this video as just a reference for other humid tanks and the last one that we have is the bromeliad. Bromeliads are beautiful and I cannot keep one alive to save my life. I have tried at least six times at this point, but for people that can, these are beautiful and they often sprout in like pretty red in the middle. We were at Home Depot and Den was like, what is that plant? I'm like, it's a bromeliad. He's like, didn't you have those before? I'm like, yep, but they never got to that point because they all died. They can be absolutely beautiful plants. They're another one that has very, very thick leaves. So the Crested Gecko can climb all over it and it can hold water when you're spraying tanks down. It can serve as a little water dish for them. They are such good plants. I just can't cannot for the life of me get them to grow. I've tried planting them. I've tried putting them in, in separate potting plants on the background. I've tried just putting moss and not soil in the containers. I've tried just tying them to driftwood. I just cannot get them to survive, but apparently that's just me. So <laughs> if you are good at plants, then you should totally do that. And I'll just be jealous of your beautiful bromeliads in your tank. And the last one on this list isn't really one, I guess. I don't know. It's moss. Moss is the last one on this list. And when I say moss, I don't mean like sphagnum moss. I mean like living moss, pillow moss and reindeer moss, like just beautiful green mosses. Again, these can do very well in crested gecko tanks because that soil is staying moist for the most part. In my opinion, having any kind of greenery on the bottom as opposed to just like leaf litter makes tanks look so much more full of life and just pretty and full. And so if you do put some little tufts of moss in there, 10 out of 10, that tank, it's going to make it look so much better just by adding that one thing. And then you can throw some leaf litter on top to make it look like outside, to make it look like a forest. But yeah, any kind of mosses, I don't want to say any kind of mosses. I'm not a moss expert. Some kind of moss can definitely help that tank out. But that is it. That is all that I have for this video. Obviously, this is not an exhaustive list. There are hundreds, if not thousands of plants that you could potentially have in that tank. I just chose to talk about the ones that are most common and easiest to find. Most of these you can get at hardware stores. Just make sure to clean them off really good. Clean that soil out. Put new soil in, or if you're going to plant in the tank, do that. Make sure it's clean and you're good to go. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite plant, your Crested Gecko tank, is or has been 
As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos, awesome company. They make conversion kits so you can turn any glass tank that you may have laying around into front opening tanks for your animals. And animals tend to enjoy front opening tanks more than you reaching down at them. It just makes them more comfortable. The conversion kits are a very inexpensive way to do that when you compare it to other name brand front opening tanks that you may get at pet stores. If you happen to order one of these, please leave us reptiles in the How Did You Hear About Us box. That way they know that you guys are coming from here. Thank you so much to Iher Gagos for continuing to sponsor these videos. If you haven't already, please feel free to follow me on my socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put on a video, which is every Sunday, and sometimes I do shorts on Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout is here, and this week's subscriber shout is here. Thank you so much for liking and following, subscribing, and commenting, and sharing, and liking. Did I say that one? And all that jazz, you are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Hopefully it's not overheating anymore. This battery is lasting for a minute. Okay. Right. Did I say at the beginning? This video is... Um, make sure to stay until the end of this. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by Bird's Nest Ferns. There's something in my eye. Now, Bird's Nest... This can... The leaves aren't, they're so cool, they're so nice, and your Crested Gecko would, will, and your Crested Gecko will absolutely, there's, but the only thing with the philodendron is you might want to be careful if you're, the only thing putting them in separate potter, potter, it, moss is the last one on this plant, on this plant, moss is the Attention dog owners, a mysterious and potentially fatal respiratory illness has sickened dogs in 14 states.